imagine that you're in your doctor's office and you've just received a devastating diagnosis. You've got a disease that you've never even heard of, and it has no treatment, and it has no cure. Imagine some of the things that you'd be feeling as, as you hear those words, some of the anxiety, some of the fear. Now imagine that it's not you, it's your son or it's your daughter. Imagine trying to kind of come to terms with the notion that you're not going to see your child become an adult. That the best you can do is go home and spend the best of your child's years with them. What if that's not enough? What if there was something you could do? Sanford created chords as a way for you to reach out, interact with the research community, and make a difference in your child's life. Now, this exercise that we just went through is hopefully, for all of you, just that, an exercise. But the fact of the matter is, for far too many people, it's a real deal. It's what they're going through every day. Two-thirds of all rare disease patients are children. Now, a rare disease is defined as anything that affects less than 200,000 people in the United States. And so, we know about 7,000 rare diseases. Um, less than 5% of them have any sort of treatment or therapy that we can use. One of the things that I think about as a scientist a lot is, is the genetic causes, the things underlying these diseases. It turns out that about 80% of rare diseases have a genetic, genetic component to them. So just some of the, the stuff I nerd out about as a scientist is, did you know that if you take the DNA from one cell in your body and you stretch it out into a single strand, that that strand of DNA is going to be about as tall as me, about six feet. This was huge. If you took all of the DNA in your body and you stretched it out into one single strand, that would go to the sun and back 30 times. That's a 93 million mile trip one way. So this is, this is huge. And if you think of that strand as a, a chain with a number of links in it, those links are what we would call base pairs. There's 3.2 billion of them. And as far as we can tell, only about 2 to 3% of that codes for anything that turns into any sort of functional unit of the cell. And so if you have any problems with these genes, if there's something that's deleted or mutated in any way, you can imagine how hard that is for a scientist to, to wrap their brain around, to tackle. It's, it's a hard thing to model in a laboratory. And when patients are diagnosed with a rare disease, a lot of times they don't just go home. A lot of times they find each other. They look for strength and unity. They, they form advocacy groups. They form foundations. They raise money for research, and they raise awareness for their disease. And most importantly, they become the experts. Really, they're the ones going through it. They know more than anybody about what the, what the disease entails. And so, that's why Sanford Cords starts our research journey by reaching out to them. Where do you go when you have a question? You find an expert. And so Cords is the way that we gather information from these patients. What's their life like? When were they diagnosed? How has the disease progressed? And we use that information to guide our rape, even our most basic research up here looking at a cells on a dish. We can take the information we learned from that and we can apply it to animal models of the disease, um, like we see here with the pig. If in the animal model we identify some sort of a therapy or a way that we can attack this disease, then we can push that into human clinical trials and that's another place that courts can step in and help to benefit uh, uh, the, a rare disease patient. We can connect rare disease patients to clinical trials. Now, CORDS isn't the only rare disease registry out there. Um, there are a few others. Um, we are the largest international rare disease registry, but I think there's two main things that really set us apart from the others. The first of which is that from the outset, we decided that we were going to do things ethically. The data that lives in our registry is always owned by the people who gave it to us, the patients themselves. We're never going to share that with anyone without getting their consent first, and if they ever ask us to remove it, we will. Second thing is that we're cost free. So if you're a patient with a rare disease or if your child has a rare disease and you want to, to, to take an active approach and, and participate in the research process, you can do that at CORDS at no cost. 
If you're a researcher who wants to research a rare disease and use the data in the registry to guide your program, that's free as well. And if you're an advocate, or if you're a board member on a foundation, and you want to partner with CORDS to, to, uh, to build a disease-specific questionnaire, something that your patients can fill out to give you a better idea of how, how this progresses, you can do that with us as well, all for free. Sad truth in the rare disease community is that almost half of these diseases don't have that foundational support. They don't have an advocacy group or somebody that's watching out for their best interests. Can you imagine how lonely that would feel? You get a devastating diagnosis like that and then Google it and not find anything. Cords wants to be that for them. We are what I call disease agnostic. It doesn't matter to us which disease you have. As long as you have a rare disease, Stanford Research and CORDS want to be here for you. Sometimes it's hard to relate to rare diseases. It's easy to relate to things that are a little more common, like Alzheimer's disease, for instance. Alzheimer's disease occurs in 1 in 10 people over the age of 65. It's something that, unfortunately, far too many of us can very personally relate to. Uh, there's another disease that I bet you haven't heard of called neiman pick type C. neiman pick type C is sometimes called childhood Alzheimer's disease. It occurs in one out of every 150,000 patients. So it's, it's incredibly rare. However, they follow the same pattern. You start to show symptoms, you visit your doctor, diagnosed, there's nothing they can do, and eventually you pass away. The difference, of course, being that in Alzheimer's, we're talking about the elderly, and in neiman pick type C, we're talking about toddlers, children, teenagers. So it brings up the question, why should people care about rare disease? If they're only occurring in very few pockets of people around the world, or maybe just a every now and then event, why should everyone care about them? Well, it's because 30 million Americans are affected by a rare disease. In a population of 300 million people, that winds up being 10%. So while it's rare that you or you or you might have any one of the 7,000 rare diseases, it turns out that it's not that rare at all for any one of us to have a rare disease. Now, I'd venture to guess that if I asked you all, you might know somebody who's struggling with one right now. At Sanford Research, we've been really fortunate that we've been able to work with different foundations, uh, different advocacy groups um, over the years. This is just one example. This is uh, Gwyneth and Charlotte Gray. These two little girls have Batten's disease. This is a rare genetic disorder uh, that is usually, their, their variant of it is typically diagnosed when they're toddlers or young children. They're born normal and healthy, but then they slowly deteriorate and they never live past their teens. And so these two little girls' parents received this diagnosis. And instead of going home, they went and did something. They sought out the experts, and they found them here at Stanford. We participated as a part of a, a multidisciplinary team. We took DNA in a tube, the very gene that those little girls are missing, and we packaged it into a virus and sent it to collaborators. And it's now part of a clinical trial that's ongoing. Charlotte and Gwyneth were, in fact, some of the first patients on that clinical trial. So this is just one way that Sanford Cords is able to partner and to connect the dots, make sure that patients are with researchers and clinicians. The point I'm trying to make is there's an awful lot of Charlottes and there's an awful lot of Gwyneths out there, there's too many. If you've been diagnosed with a rare disease, if your child is suffering from a rare disease, you don't have to just go home. Find cords. We're stronger together. Thank you.